In the last lecture, we looked at diffusion and reaction in a porous spherical particle for a first order reaction. In developing a concentration profile through the particle, we identified a non-dimensional number, the Thiele modulus, that characterizes the relative rates of diffusion and reaction. Let's consider the Thiele modulus more generally and a related non-dimensional parameter called the effectiveness factor. The Thiele modulus quantifies the maximum rate of reaction divided by the maximum rate of diffusion. As we previously saw, at low Thiele modulus, diffusion is fast relative to reaction and there are minimal concentration gradients throughout the porous particle. While at high Thiele modulus, reaction is fast compared to diffusion and significant concentration gradients develop. The effectiveness factor, which we denote eta, is another useful quantity which describes the actual measured reaction rate divided by the rate which would be observed in the absence of concentration gradients. So if we had our porous spherical particle, the effectiveness factor would be the rate at the actual concentration C sub A inside the particle divided by the rate that we'd observe if all active sites inside the particle were seeing a concentration Ca sub s. The Thiele modulus can be defined in a way that's general to the geometry of the catalyst particle by first defining a characteristic length scale for diffusion. We'll label this L. So L will be the volume of the particle divided by its surface area. So for a sphere, for example, the volume would be 4 thirds pi times the radius of the particle cubed divided by the surface area, 4 pi r squared. So we would have an L value of the radius of the particle divided by three. So in this case, we can define a generalized Thiele modulus for an nth order reaction in A. So the generalized Thiele modulus we can write as L, our characteristic length scale, times n plus one, the order of reaction, divided by two, times the reaction rate constant K, times the concentration of A at the surface, raised to the power of n minus one, divided by the effective diffusivity of A. And this is all raised to the power of one half. So here our Thiele modulus just depends on the length scale for diffusion and our respective rate and diffusion constants. We'll note that this expression gets somewhat more complicated if we consider reversible reactions as well. When defined in this way, a general relationship exists between the effectiveness factor and the Thiele modulus. So we can write that the effectiveness factor is equal to the hyperbolic tangent of the Thiele modulus divided by the Thiele modulus. So looking at what this relationship looks like, we can plot it up. So the relationship looks something like this. In this region here at low Thiele modulus, our effectiveness factor is essentially equal to one. And so here we are reaction rate limited. So diffusion is fast relative to surface reaction and so there are no gradients within the particle. So again, the effectiveness factor is equal to the rate that we actually observe divided by the rate with no gradients. So at this low Thiele modulus, there's no concentration gradients and our effectiveness factor is just one. So in this region here, the effectiveness factor goes as one over the Thiele modulus. And so here our reaction rate is limited by internal diffusion. So as we reduce rates of diffusion by increasing the Thiele modulus, our overall observed rate is going to decrease. So here we've discussed two non-dimensional parameters, the Thiele modulus and effectiveness factor, that can both give us useful information for understanding which processes are limiting our overall rates in systems where we have internal resistance to diffusion coupled with reaction.